Hello everyone, welcome back to Analog, a hate story. Somehow I have managed to sing today for about an hour, and yet my voice is not completely ruined. In fact, if anything, it's actually doing very well. I don't know how that happened. Normally if I sing like two notes, my voice is totally fucked for like two days. Ah, <sighs> I guess it would help if you learn how to sing properly. Yeah. And also don't sing things that are out of your comfort range. Yeah. I usually don't do either. But anyway, amazingly I'm fine. Alright, 80% unlocked, so I guess we're almost done with the game, I guess. Let's go. Alright, uh, what was the last thing that happened? Oh yes. She was gonna kill people. I read her diaries about her plans to cut, out, uh, cut off life support or something like that. And then... What did she do right before I left, though? She unlocked a bunch of new ones, but from for what? Uh, I don't know. Let's just start reading them, and I guess I'll remember. Block 7. Alright, these are all new. Mother of the New Anxiety, peace at last. Alright. Oh, wait a minute. Is this a new person? Um, how do I pronounce that? Heyo? Heyo Min Chung? Um... Let me check. Hold on. H-E-O. Pronunciation guy to the rescue. H-E-O, 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 E-O. Ka. Cut. Hyo. Ka. Hya. Hya. Hyo. Hya. Does that just mean it's pronounced Hya then? Wait a minute. Except for the following when they're at the beginning of words. That's not at the beginning of words. I mean, that's not at the beginning of the word. So, no. Hmm. I guess it's just Hyo. Hyo, what's up? Hyo Minchung. Okay, Hyo Minchung. It seems that in the year I spent visiting my parents, everything has gone to hell in my husband's family without his knowing. Clearly, I never should have left. He has an idea, but he doesn't understand just how bad things have gotten. When I left, it all seemed under control. The Pale Bride would be of the right age to be married to the Emperor soon enough, and we would be able to use that connection to bring favor to the family. A good plan, except, it turns out, the Pale Bride is not even close to ready for marriage. Age has nothing to do with it, it's the maturity that she lacks. Wait a minute, hold on. Hyo Min Chung. What? Hyo Min Chung, who... Are you in the family tree? Wh who are you? Hyo Min Chung. Okay, Hyo Min Chung is the wife of Chung Su. Who's Chung Su? Um. Uh, names. Too many names! Chung Su. Chung Su. Hyo Min Chung. I, I don't remember who that is. Eh. Oh well. Anyway, I'm, I'm sure it'll be clear. It's the maturity that she lacks. When she first awoke, right before I left, she seemed a little confused, but that was hardly unexpected. She had a whole new family to get accustomed to, and it seemed obvious enough that anyone born so far in the past would have some difficulty adjusting to modern life. But this is far beyond that. There is something simply wrong with that child. When I got back, the first thing Yong Sook's wife did was tell me about how sorry she was for not being able to control the child. I rolled my eyes, as if a grown woman couldn't handle someone of her age. How are you going to raise my grandson like that? I asked. She was quiet, and let me see the pale bride for myself. And the first time I saw young Sok try to get her to do something as simple as sort out his laundry, she wasn't just disobedient, she was openly defiant. When I stepped in to admonish her, it had absolutely no effect. All she did was argue back at me. I tried every approach I could think of, appealing to filiality, explaining how important a virtue obedience was, even trying to appeal to sentimentality, everything. She just kept saying the same thing, that it wasn't fair to make her do it. Here's the obvious concern, and it's what I said to her. Are you going to tell your husband he's not being fair when he wants something from you? I thought that would put some sense into her, but no. She just answered, yes. There's no way this unruly child could possibly be marriageable. Not like this. 
she'd be sent back within a day. And with good reason, what man could possibly want a nightmare like her in his life? Yep, she definitely was having trouble adjusting to her newfound horrible life. And I don't blame her. Mother, huh? I, I don't really know what to say about her, even now. This is the first time I've read what she wrote, and it's just... Well, there's more. Here. Read them for yourself. Mother, from The Pale Bride. Dear Diary, the good news is, health-wise, I seem to be doing much better this month. I'm sure this isn't a permanent thing, it's happened before. I can't really remember how the doctor from the past explained it anymore, but he said it was pretty normal and not something to get my hopes up about. Still, some days this month I actually had enough energy to want to move around. Not that I could move around, of course, I can't leave the house. A good girl shouldn't, is what everyone keeps saying, but I have the energy to, at least, and that's something. And the big news is that the woman who's supposed to be my adopted mother came back. I didn't really see her much before she left. I might as well have been meeting a new person. I wish I could say I had high hopes for her, and that I had a thought that maybe she'd be fine. That'd be a lie, though. I knew she'd be as bad as the rest the moment I saw her. And she was. Of course she was. She's even worse than sister-in-law. She gives those these awful lectures. I can't even describe them. They're that horrible. She's that horrible. Independent Woman by Hyo Min Chung. Okay, so that's the Pale Bride's mother. I'm doing air quotes. Mother. If you're so worried, why don't you just explain everything to her simply and rationally? Chung Su asked me. My response was obvious. She's a woman. We're not particularly rational. He said, You know what I mean. I could hardly do it. But coming from a woman, perhaps you will understand that it's all for her own good? Maybe, I said doubting it. But I tried anyway. She took her time arriving after I summoned her to my room. Can we speak? I asked her, trying to keep my voice calm. She glared, then snapped. Fine. I asked her to sit down, but she refused. Look, I said, trying to speak to her as an equal. I still didn't think my husband was right, but it was worth trying. I've been told you'd rather be called Hyane, is that right? She said yes, bitterly, not giving me much to go off. That's a very pretty name, I said. Thanks, she said, but her voice was still unfriendly. My parents gave it to me, I said. Oh, my parents gave it to me. I said, you must miss them very much, she nodded. I don't understand, Hyane. Were you so difficult with them too? No, she said. They were nice. They actually cared about me. They're nothing like you people. I sighed. I care about you, Hyane. You're a part of the family. You're a Kim. Your parents are our ancestors, and I know they think it is, it's important that we raise you right. If you want to be a bad, unfilial daughter and treat us without any respect, well, you wouldn't be the first. Do you really think an old woman like me really cares that much about your opinion of me? I thought, maybe I'd try appealing to her selfishness. Her marriage is important to the family, but clearly she doesn't care about filiality. It's you I'm worried about. Do you think any husband is really going to put up with the way you are, for even a second? She kept glaring at me. That's all you keep talking about. Marriage, marriage, marriage. I'm 14. I'm 14 years old. What's wrong with you? Why does everything have to be about some man? Why do I have to marry somebody that you picked? She screamed at me. I remained calm. You're going to be a royal concubine, Hyane. We're not dumping you off on just anyone. There's no better man. I don't know if you were already engaged in the past, but your parents would do the same, if they could. It's what's best for you. They would want this. No, they wouldn't, she shrieked. They wanted me to grow up. They wanted me to be, to be an independent woman. That's what mom and dad thought was important. I don't want to be a concubine. I don't care about marriage. An independent woman? They wanted you to be a whore? I asked. My patience run as thin as anyone's would be. I didn't believe for a second my husband's ancestors were the monster she was making them to be, and was sick of this. Get out, I snapped at her. Just get out. Jesus, it's no reason Hyane hated her mother because she's a fucking piece of shit. <sighs> Are 
Are you just showing me that because you want to see more from her? Um... No, I wanted to hear your thoughts. Yeah, I didn't think so. I don't know what to say. She was cruel. So, 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 so cruel. Now that I've read her perspective, it doesn't... It doesn't change anything. Fine, she actually believed what she was saying. That doesn't make all of it right. I hate her. I don't care if she's long dead. I don't care if I was the one who did it. I still hate her. I hate her, I hate her, I hate her, I hate her, I hate her. Okay, yeah, I get the picture. <laughs> yeah, well, I... I'm sure you feel it more strongly than me, Hyane, but even I hate her too, and I've only barely read her stuff. I... I... Oh, jeez, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to work myself up like that. It's just... You don't pity her, do you? I, d I don't at all. Good. Me neither. And that's what I had to live with, reading what she wrote. She honestly believed that. It just reminds me of how I ended up thinking. How I completely gave up and believed her attitude. She tried to wear me down. She succeeded. She doesn't deserve pity, and I didn't deserve what she did to me. I just... I could never forgive her. Ever. I... I'm really glad you understand. Sorry. I've calmed down now. It's just hard to think about, even now. I really do hate her. Wait a minute, I can talk to her ag again? About the same note? Hmm. Okay, let's see what this is. There was... There was one big fight I had with her. The one that changed everything. The one I finally lost. My diary makes it sound really dramatic. I know. I was young at the time, but it really was. Just read it. It's exactly how it went. Okay. The New Anxiety by Young Silk's Wife. Dearest Mother, my mother-in-law has relieved me of any responsibility for looking after the Pale Bride. As a matter of pride, I feel bad that a simple child is too much for me to handle. But I'm certainly glad she's not my problem anymore. Now I can put my undivided attention back where it belongs, onto my husband and his ambitions. Tell me though, mother, because I know we didn't always get along that well. I was never that bad, was I? Sure, we were both happy when I moved out. Well, perhaps I wasn't happy right away, I was more scared. But I'm sure you were relieved to have some space. But you would have never given up on me, right? I was never that bad, was I? Deep down, I worry. My husband seems content to take his time to have children. And... And which is a decision I can certainly live with. But what about when we do? What if we have a daughter? Will I fail with her, too? I've been telling myself that it's not me, it's her. She's a particularly... Peculiarly unruly child, and it's not ordinarily that bad. It's not, right? Please tell me I have nothing to worry about. Please? You know, I never did like her. When I woke up, she was just this awful person who kept saying the most awful things. Never as bad as mother, but still. I didn't read any of her letters when I was alive, of course, but you know what really surprised me? She made such an awful impression on my life. I hated her the most for so long. And she barely even ever mentioned me. All my suffering, it was just a minor distraction to her, nothing more, insignificant, compared to her man. I... <sighs> There's one more from her that you should read. I don't know how to feel about it. I don't know how to feel about her. There's just one thing that I keep thinking, though. Just one thing. I have no idea what her name was. Yeah, she's just identified as Young Silk's wife, right? Because she's not even deserving of having her name in the records. Well, in, I mean, in fact, she's not even supposed to be able to know how to write, right? Isn't that frowned upon? <sighs> Alright. My last stand. Okay, I'm guessing that's the big argument, the blowout with Hyo Min Chung. Alright, my last stand, the Pale Bride. When was this sent? Independent woman. 
Okay, so it was like a, it was like five weeks after the whole issue with the I want to, my parents would have wanted me to be an independent woman. All right, so pretty recent. I mean, pretty close to the last one. Dear diary, everything managed to spiral out of control so quickly today. I wasn't planning on it happening this way, but here's the point where I make my stand, I guess. It sounds dramatic, but I won't just let them marry me off to some stranger. I won't. I won't let them. Just before dinner yesterday, Mother told me that I had to do an interview with some man. The Emperor, I guess, for all I care. The way she put it was, I'd get a chance to see that he's a man you could fall in love with, or something stupid like that. As if, I said in response, and I spent the rest of the evening thinking about what I could possibly do to make it clear I wouldn't let them do this. This morning, after breakfast, sister-in-law showed up in my room. Good morning, she said. Today's a big day for you, isn't it? Mother-in-law wanted me to help you get dressed and all made up. You'll want to make a good first impression, after all. I glared at her and summoned up all my courage. No, I said. What? She asked. No, I'm not going. She left, and Mother herself came in. This was it. I told myself this was the big moment. I'm not going, I said before she could say anything. I'm not going to get dressed up, I'm not going to meet him, and I'm definitely not going to get married, I shouted. For a moment, she said nothing and didn't move. Then she left, too, without saying a word. I thought that would feel good, but it didn't. It just made me worry more. I couldn't have possibly won that easily, I thought, and I hadn't, of course. After a few minutes, she returned with Father, who looked incredibly angry. Min Chung says you... says you're refusing to get ready for your interview, he said. Yeah, I stammered, not used to talking to him. I won't. I won't go, and I won't get married. He walked over in just two strides, then glared at me for a second. I had no idea what he was going to do. Then he slapped me in the face, so hard that it knocked me over. Yes, you will, he said. I'll drag you there kicking and screaming if I have to. My face in so much pain, I forced myself to sit back up. I won't, I said, bracing myself. If he hit me again, he did. Yes, you will, he said. I couldn't keep this up. It already hurt so much, I couldn't just brave this out. Then it came to me. If you make me do the interview, I said, I'll tell the Emperor that you've been conspiring behind his back. It was all I could think of, and all I could do was cross my fingers and hope that the threat worked. It had to. He glared at me, and in that moment, I knew it worked. The two of them looked at each other, and they both left together. And that was three hours ago. I don't know what's going to happen now, and I, th and I think my face is swollen. It still hurts, and I didn't, uh, I didn't want it to go that way. So that's me. Making my stand. Huh, I wonder how long that worked for. And also, no surprise, her father is abusive. Everyone's, almost everyone seems to be emotionally abusive, but he's just outright physically abusive. Yay, Father of the Year award goes to you, fucking douchebag. Oh, I'll, I'll get to that. But for now... Please, just look at everything else first. Okay. Drastic measures by Hyo Min Chung. That's oh, this is oh, this is the same day. Th yeah, this is the same day as my last stand. The pale bride picked the worst of all possible days to throw another one of her childish fits, refusing to even get dressed for her interview. And this was one with the Emperor himself. Not even my husband was able to get her to listen. He had to personally apologize himself for not being able to bring her as scheduled, and lied about a sudden illness. You have to do something about her, I said to my husband that evening. She's completely out of control. I know, he said. That is quite clear. He looked so worried. I hugged him and tried to comfort him. Everything would fall apart if something couldn't be done. She threatened to say something stupid and dangerous to the Emperor, and we were both scared that she might. Maybe it's time to consider doing something drastic, I said to him. He nodded. I know, he said. I can only think of one idea. I do not like it. I would rather not. Even hitting her was far worse than I would have wanted. He explained his idea to me, and I agreed that it was terrible, and I didn't like it either. But it would stop her from arguing, stop her from ruining her own life. My husband was, as always, right. There was only one way. Wait, what the... wait. Oh. Um. 
Okay, I was wondering about her muteness. And see, back then she actually talked. And later, she... Can't. Did... 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 Did her parents make her mute? Wait, what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep reading, but I'm starting to feel sick to my stomach. Peace at last. This is. Whoa, this is this is way later. Uh, five, six, seven. This is like eight months later. Peace at last. Hyo Min Chung. Recently, the Pale Bride's temperament has improved immensely. It isn't simply that she's now quiet, it's that she's actually respectful and calmer. After rescheduling, she had an interview with the Emperor, and he was actually quite charmed with her. I'm just so happy, for her own sake, that she's finally stopped resisting the marriage. It's all coming together now, a date has been set for when... Uh, for when she'll be sent to live with him, and in the meanwhile, things at home have been peaceful again for everyone. Actually, it's better than just that. I've been spending more time with her, of, of her own free will. I've been giving her advice for coping with marriage, and now the girl actually listens politely. Otherwise, there is little else to write about. I wish there had been a better way to get her to behave, but in the end, it seems to be working out. I still can't imagine how awful it would be if, she re if she'd refused to ever leave the home and simply made life hell for us, or worse, if she'd got sent off and tried to pull any of that on her husband. She'd get sent back for sure. Maybe now things will finally start to come together for the family. I must admit, for a time, I doubted the optimism that Chung Su ex expressed in the 319th year, but now, it seems that he was right all along. What a relief. Hold on, let me read a part of this again. I wish there had been a better way to get her to behave, but in the end, it seems to be working out. Shh. Can't imagine how awful it would be if she'd refused to ever leave home and simply made life hell for us, or worse if she got sent up to try to pull any of that her husband, she gets sent back for sure. Okay, well, they haven't explicitly said anything, but... Of her own free will. Yeah. Not a lot of free will going around here, huh? Excuse me, I will be right back. Okay, I'm back. Yeah, of her own free will. I can't believe she actually said that. No kidding, that's like when you... That's like... It's like, what, the fucking Inquisition torturing someone until they confess? Look, I got a confession of their own free will. See, they signed this piece of paper. Um, yeah. Free will has nothing to do with that. It's wrong. It's completely wrong. I can't believe she could have possibly thought that. I... Just unbelievable. Yeah, did she... Did she actually believe it was of, of her own free will? I mean, this is written by her. So, uh, I mean, it's written in private. So I'm assuming that is her actual thoughts. She actually believed that was of her own free will? She is completely delusional. Completely. The new promise, Yang Sok's wife. Dearest mother, Today, the Pale Bride finally left home to live with her new husband. As she isn't a primary wife, there was no fanfare or ceremony for her departure itself. So instead, last night we had a special big feast to commemorate. I know I have said bad things about her before, but it's not just that I was happy to see her gone. She's been better since mother and father-in-law managed to get her to keep quiet. The th Managed to get her to keep quiet. How how did how did they do that? Someone tell me how they did that. I'd like to know. But I'm pretty sure I already do. The thought of it still leaves me really uncomfortable. She was always just a confused child. I hate the fact the family considers her so important and neglects my husband, and I certainly hate her for not appreciating that that status and fighting it. But the fact that she doesn't understand the world I can feel for that. 
It's not like I always understand myself. Regardless, it went very well. The big feast was my idea, and she was happy to help with the cooking. Earlier, she had spent the afternoon getting ready the dress she was going to wear when she arrived with mother-in-law, and she seemed rather anxious about it. While we cooked, I opened the wine early and poured it for her. I think she needed it. I told her the same story I told you a while ago, about how scared I was when I first moved in. It seems as though it was a lifetime ago, and yet despite all the strangeness, I have grown so accustomed to it. You'll eventually grow to love him, I promised her, just as you promised me all those years, years ago. Appreciate how good you'll have it. You've... you've read almost everything now. I know you've had faith in me, and I promise. I promise it hasn't been misplaced. And there's just one more thing. I don't think you'll be surprised. You seem smart. I'm sure... I'm sure you've already guessed what it is. If you're talking about the mutinous thing, then... Yeah. I think I have. Still. Go ahead. Ask it. Ask me the obvious question. Okay, and how would I do that? What block was I just in? Three? Nope. Which, which block was that? Uh, six? No. Actually, wait, would this one mutinous? Would this have any, any new things? Nope. Which freaking block was I in? It was a new one. Seven? Or did I just do that? I did just do that. Um... Alright, drastic measures... Here we go. <sighs> yep. How did the big fight end? That's what you're asking, right? Yeah. I, I mean, I'm pretty sure I already know. But yeah. Or maybe you're asking, how did it change everything? How is that the most important thing? Maybe... Maybe you want to know how bad it could have been that it made me think the whole family deserved to die? Yep. Well, if you haven't already guessed, here. Here's my last diary entry, just I can't... I can't say it myself. If it's anything like I think it is, then I can see why. I can't bring myself to... even now. Please, just read it. I'm starting to feel sick to my fucking stomach. Forever silenced. Hold on, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. And I'm dreading reading this. Okay, drastic measures and forever silenced. These were made on the same day. You have to do something about her. Okay, so apparently they made these plans and I guess executed them on the same day. 513, 513. All right. Dear Diary, the evening where everything went wrong, where I thought I was going to win with my adopted parents, well, I didn't. I lost. Making my stand, I wrote, just hours before it happened. Yeah, right. When I got called into the kitchen, they were both there. On one of the stove burners, there was a knife. I thought it was a little bit odd, but didn't care. Father stared at me and said, The fighting needs to end now. He was so sure of himself. Of course he was. He had every reason to be. But I stubbornly stood my ground. I said no. I do not want to hurt you, he lied. Just promise to be less argumentative, and this can end peacefully. But I just had to fight back. I had to. St I just had to say no. I just had to remind him I wasn't joking. I really will tell the Emperor that you hurt me, and that you plotted against him. No, he said, you won't. He motioned at Mother, and said, bring her over. She grabbed me, and I tried to dig my feet in, but it didn't work. Then Father pinned me against the wall with his whole body, and I kicked and screamed, desperately trying to get free, but it was no use. 
He was big, and I was small and sick and weak and frail. Then he grabbed the knife from the stove, and I shrieked in horror. No, I screamed at him. Don't! But then Mother grabbed my mouth and held it open. I tried to keep screaming, but I was powerless and terrified. When he raised the knife towards me, I thought he was going to kill me. It was worse. The next thing I knew, I could taste disgusting flesh as he stuck his fingers in my mouth and pulled. I'm sorry, Mother said. Then briefly I could taste the steel. Then nothing but blood. All I could taste was so much blood. Nothing but blood. Finally, they both let go of me and I collapsed under the floor. Why, I wanted to say, but I couldn't. I blacked out from the pain after that, but just before I did, I could swear I heard Father say, You will never ever argue with any man again. He was right, of course. Jesus fucking Christ. That, that was extremely hard to read. Uh, I'm shaking at this point. Oh my god. What the fuck? Her parents... sliced her vocal cords or something in her throat to make it so she, she was unable to speak. So that she could never speak out against anyone again and so that she could never reveal any secrets to the family. Her own parents. Oh my god. Um. I don't know if I can keep going. Okay. <sighs> That's why. That's why I gave up. That's why I wanted to kill them so much. That's... Sorry, it's really hard to talk about. It's just... I'll try. I'm sorry. I told you it'd make some sense, right? That there was a good reason? Please, tell me you don't think I've let you down. <laughs> no. No, you haven't. They deserved... whatever the fuck they got. I... I haven't? You don't... You mean you understand, then? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. I... That really means so much to me. I'm so glad. I don't know what I'd do if you didn't think... Well, thank you. Thank you so much. I'm just... I was terrified, so terrified, I thought you might not. I'm so glad. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's, it's no problem. Oh my god. I, I just feel sick after that. Uh, that's like... the board, the One of the most terrible things I've ever read in my life. And now I'm thinking about it again. Oh, god. Okay. <clears throat> oh. 
Great, now I can't even see, because my eyes are covered in tears. That's just wonderful. Oh, good one. Okay. <clears throat> um, hey, could we just talk a little more instead? Sure. I'd like that. There's, uh, something really important I, te I need to, uh, tell you. Yeah, let's talk. Right, uh, I have... it's... I... Okay, let, let me save it first. I have really strong feelings about... <laughs> it's not... I th really think you're a good person and I feel... I consider you to be a really good listener and a great... Ah, jeez. I'm in love with you. I... I... Finally said it. Oh, this is so embarrassing. I know, it's that... Uh, I'm being really silly, right? I mean, oh, jeez. I'm sure you know what you think. I'm sure I know what you're thinking, right? You think that's ridiculous. Not at all. You... You don't? Oh, that's why. That's why I'm in love. Because you manage to happily surprise me every time. I never... I never thought that I would find someone who understands me. Someone who listens, who would hear my whole life story, and doesn't hate me. You really have been wonderful. I know, I know, it's a lot to spring on someone, just like that. And I don't even know if you're even a man, or... the sort of woman who wouldn't have a problem with that, and still unmarried. But if you are, do you think we, we might have a chance together? Even just a chance? I have no idea how a relationship with, with an AI person could work, but I don't care. Yes. Hell yes. You are an amazing person. Ah. That is truly the most amazing thing I've ever heard in my life. Thank you. Thank you so much. I've been sort of thinking about this for a while. Uh, a little bit embarrassing, I know, but... Well, we don't have to rush to get married or anything. I mean, you know how scary it was the last time I was a wife. I'd just really like to, uh, just be with you, as an equal. I completely understand. No problem. Does that sound right to you? Of course. Wonderful. Oh, I really do, I really, I really do love you. Well, if I do, whoops, if I do say so myself, I think I might love you a lot too, Yane. Oh my god, you're so adorable! Uh, uh, okay, okay, okay. By the way, I was just thinking, uh, has she ever mentioned how she became an AI? I mean, she died. She's dead. Or her body's dead. So she, at some point she uploaded herself as an AI or something? Did she go over that and I just forgot? Or has she never talked about it? How the hell does that work? I mean, wait, wait. Is she even in artificial intelligence then? I mean, if she uploaded her brain, then surely she's not artificial in any way. I... Uh, I don't know. I don't know how that works. It's funny, isn't it? I know almost nothing about you. I have no idea what you look like. I have no idea how you talk. I have no idea of what's supposed to be the most important thing about a person, if you're a man or a woman. I have no idea how old you are, although I suppose you must be much younger. <laughs> yeah, you're what, 600 something years old? I guess I'm younger than you. Or maybe older, depending on how you look at it. Yeah, nor do I have any idea where you're from, or even your name. But I know that you take me seriously, that you understand me, that you don't treat me as something less just for being a woman. I know that talking to you makes me feel better than I've ever felt in my life. And that's good enough for me. That's far better than I've ever had. Ah, uh, so... Very well, I'll decompile myself now. And that way you can just drop to a terminal and type download to copy everything to your ship, including myself. You're gonna decompile yourself? That sounds... painful. It, are, uh, are you sure? 
it should only take a few days to do a complete transfer. I'll see you soon, alright? Wait a minute, wait. Wait, hold on. It'll, it'll take a few days to do a complete transfer. It'll take a few days. <laughs> Wasn't the time that Mute would degrade um, if she was left off? If her core was left disabled for over 24 hours? So Mute will be fried if I do this. Hmm. Ah. So this is how my sister-in-law felt on her wedding night. Okay, let me save it again. I don't think this is the end of the game. And I mean, I think I have some options here. Whoops, hell, <laughs> help. Right, well, I could start her download. I could go over to mute. I, I don't really want to disable her core, though. Uh, was it list? Yeah, it's at 19%. So, I could... Disable Hyane and activate mute and go talk to her before I download Hyane. Um. Uh, I don't really want to do that. Like, let me check this. Um, power control. Disable core two. It'll give me a warning, right? You cannot perform that action. Oh, never mind, I can't even do that. Why can't I do that? Hmm. It's weird. So I remember before, it gave me the information about how long I would have. You know, 24 hours, warning, may, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, okay, let's start the download. Starting active system will download, will permanently terminate session. AI personality is available. Download Hyun A in addition to logs. Yes. Hyun A will be transferred. Preparing files for transfer, now. Receiving files. Estimated download time, 3 days, 22 hours, 59 minutes. Okay. Oh, that is one of, I guess, one of the ends. Story and code, Christine Love. Art by Raid, if that's how you pronounce it. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. Oh, that's adorable. <laughs> wow. I think I might start crying again, but this time not because something horrible happened, but because something nice actually happened. That's so fucking nice that after all the shit she went through, all of that, I mean, look, she... She had a terminal illness. And then she's put into stasis to wake up in a time in the future when her parents hoped medicine would have gotten better. So she she already she was really young. She was what was she, 13, 14? When she was put into stasis? Or something like that? She was that young and she had a terminal illness. She was put into stasis. She woke up far in the future to a time when her her biological parents were dead. And instead of things going forwards, things had gone backwards. Medicine was worse than it was before. Society and the culture was fucked up. And horrible. She woke up in a worse time, with her parents dead, with her terminal illness, still with her. And she wasn't able to get it cured, and then she just faced oppression after... violent and mental abuse and... just... all of that shit. And then, and then, she was floating for what, like 600 years or something? with absolutely no one to talk to. And now... Now, finally, after 600 plus years, she's actually with someone who understands her and treats her well. That is... beautiful. 
and such a relief. I, I don't even know how to talk about it, but that's just wonderful. Original soundtrack, Isaac Schenkler. Editing by Shidachi. Incoming message. Ooh, what is this? Good work on recovering the Mangungwa's files. I just spoke to the sponsor's representative on, on audio. He sounded really pleased with what you delivered. I have credited your account with the standard payment. Listen, I've got another job lined up for you. It's on Earth. Whoa, 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 go, wait, go back. Hold on, I didn't finish reading that. Listen, I've got another job, uh, job lined up for you. It's on Earth, but it sounds to me like after that last job, you could use a change of pace. There's a man whose wife has... Well, I guess the description isn't really important. So we're going to Earth, and that's one of the things she wanted to see. She was wondering if she was ever going to get to see Earth. And she is. Oh my god. Oh. Alright, playtesting, playtesting, playtesting. Korean translation, green PR, playtesting, playtesting. White Rabbit font. Oh, is that what this font's called? White Rabbit? Oh yeah, and special thanks to the creator of the Renpai engine. It is a really cool engine. I actually messed around with it a little bit myself. It's pretty cool. Unfortunately, I don't, I don't know anything about coding in Python, so... It didn't exactly go all that well. <laughs> but it's a neat engine. I like it. Ending 2. Yes, okay, so there are multiple endings. Completion rate this time, 85%. Total completion rate, 85%. I wonder how you get... Well, I mean... Okay, one of the other endings is obvious. Like, okay... It seems like you basically have a major decision between Hyun A and Mute. And I think you can decide to go with Mute instead of Hyun A. So I'm guessing that would at least be one other major ending. I don't know if there's any others. I feel... Hmm... I feel happy with this ending, though. It feels like a complete story. And I like how it went. I am curious what Mute would have to say. I don't know if I can get her... You know, like, towards the end of the game, I don't know if there was ever any chance for me to switch to her and get her opinion on stuff. I don't know. I mean, what could she say that could possibly persuade me any differently about what happened? I, I, don't, I really don't think there's anything she could do. That would really make me change my outlook on anything major. I don't know. But anyway, yeah, I feel good with that playthrough. I don't think I'm going to replay it. Um, I guess I'll read about the other endings and see if there's anything, like, major that I, I missed and maybe should do. But I feel like I'm not going to. Anyway. Achievement. <laughs> Deep Space Detective. My wife. <laughs> uh, see you next mission. Another achievement. Are, are there any more lurking? Okay. Wait, bonus content. Wait, what is this? Oh, it actually tells you the ending. Hold on. Um. Whoa, whoa wait, what do we have here? Okay. Ending one. Yane <clears throat> leaves home in the care of a new friend. The former bride falls in love for the first time. Okay, so... I'm, I'm guessing ending one is probably if you left with her, but you weren't in love with her, or she didn't love you, or something like that. If you're just friends, instead of in love. Ending three, the investigator leaves alone, so that's if you don't take any of them. Who the hell wouldn't take any of them? That's so sad. Ending four, the security program is relieved of her duties. Relief of her duty. Hmm. Ending five, harem ending. Wait a minute. How? Wait, that, that means you get to take both of them, right? But isn't there not enough power to grab both of them? How? Now I'm curious. Maybe I might go back. How? Maybe if before she wanted to be downloaded, if you s turned her off and then switched on mute and talked to her and... But no, wait. It, it seems like after one of them offers to be downloaded... 
that you can't activate the other one. Maybe if you... <laughs> what if you lied about them to each other so they thought that each other weren't so bad? I, I don't know. I mean, that's not something I would do. I have no idea. I But, I mean, these, like, most of these I get how to get, but the harem ending, I have no idea. Anyway, what is this? That's a website. Messages, historical notes, and it looks like... Oh, concept art. Um... Well, let's click on messages first. What is this? I'm curious. What is this? Oh, I guess that allows you to read all the ones you've found? Okay. Whoops. Historical notes. What is this? Oh, here we go. Okay. Modern society aboard the Mongungwa is based on the... Uh, I don't know how to pronounce that. Josian? Hosian? Cho Chosian? I don't know. Joseon Dynasty, one of the most brutally oppressive eras for women in Korean history. The dynasty was characterized by its long-term enactment of a highly regressive social program. It ended up transforming what had been a fair society into an incredibly stratified, stagnant, oppressive exaggeration of traditional Confucian ideals. Some of the details of Mgungwa society are fanciful. The low fertility rate, the pale bride's injury, the large number of women's letters which were saved, the small royal family, or the idea of a woman maintaining as much power as mute, but most are not. In the most important ways, this is what society really was like. The beliefs expressed are not exaggerations. They're often understatements. That is extremely depressing. Okay, let's look at the concept art. Um, endings. Small spaceship cockpit. <laughs> Ghetto computer. <laughs> Ending template. Okay, so that's yeah, pretty much what it looked like right there, except without her face and without the hand. Whoops. Cool. Hmm, there's, looks like there's a lot of concept art missing. Maybe you unlock more if you get other endings? I'm not sure. Anyway, concept art of Han Jane as maid. Compose it to do. Yeah, that looks... Really close to the final version. Detective. Okay, so that was the final or close to the final version there. It's like the sort of silver modern look, like blackish pants and like a silver uh, shirt or coat or whatever. Some other color variations. Yeah, this one definitely looks the best. This one looks more classically detective. Uh, legs end up looking too short. Hmm? Do they? Huh? Okay. Long coat. So yeah, I guess they went with the short coat. Long coat looks more traditionally detective. The shorter coat looks more like a... Between the shorter coat and the silver look, it looks kind of more like a... Space Age version of a detective, which is probably what they're going for. Expressions. Oh god, those are so small I can barely see them. Mini charts. Total of 114 expressions for Hyane. And 94 for Mute. 114, damn. Yeah, I noticed that almost, like, basically every single time you advance the dialogue, there's a slightly different expression on her face. Or at least slightly, sometimes very different. So yeah, there definitely were a lot of expressions. Shanae, final. Oh my god, that's adorable. What does it say? Legit, it's really tiny. Legit buyers will get to see the colored version of this gift image. Wait, what? Wait, huh? What do you mean? We'll get to see the the colored version of this gift image. You, what? I don't understand. Like, is this meant to look colored here? Or do you see it somewhere else? Because if it's meant to look colored here, then it should be be legit because I bought it on Steam? I, I own it on Steam. I just got Steam achievements for it. So, okay. Anyway, that's so adorable. <sighs> yeah, a lot of this is really small. I can barely read it. Magungwa, hibiscus, something. Korea's national... Oh, that's, oh, that's Korea's national flower. I had no idea. Okay. 
Wait, what happens if you click on this ending? Oh, you get to see the ending image. I am curious about the other endings. Hmm. Sometimes I wonder whether it's better to play uh, to see some of the other endings, or if it's better to leave your first playthrough as the only one you experience. I don't know. Because sometimes if you go back, it can be kind of grindy. I think I'm going to stick with my playthrough, yeah, okay. I'm probably going to stick with it. Anyway, so in summary, this game is really, really good. I, I love this game. I loved Digital A Love Story when I played it uh, years ago. And I love this as well. Actually, I love this even more. It, The writing is so good. Just, I mean, okay, let me just mention the only thing I didn't like, okay? The only thing I didn't like about it is that sometimes you had to go back and forth between all the notes to progress the game and get to the AI to say something about it, and you didn't know which note to go to, so you just kind of like, you're basically grinding through the notes, just waiting for the AI to comment on one of them, which was really weird. I don't know why there wasn't just like a symbol next to the messages that the AI will comment on, so you don't have to go through that. You know, just some indicator that the AI has something new to say. That would have been super nice. But that is literally the only thing I didn't like about the game. Everything else was great. Interesting characters with serious depth to them. Like, basically no one, really no one was a stereo, uh, just, you know, just a shallow character. No one was just a stereotype. Everyone had depth. And thanks to the note system where you get to read things from multiple people's perspectives, you get to learn it from this AI, from that AI, from this person, from a relative, and then from the actual person themselves. It allows you to see things from very different perspectives and really get a very good picture of how people actually were, how they thought, how they behaved, how others perceived them. The writing is just brilliant. Exceptionally well-written game. And one of the most emotional... One of the most emotional games I've ever played. I mean, that was just... It was up and down. Sometimes it was just adorable and really funny and cute, and other times it was uh, so unbelievably, horribly disturbing, it made me almost unable to continue. And that is thanks to, once again, the incredible writing to be able to make it that emotional. So, I hope you enjoyed my playthrough of Analog A Hate Story. I certainly did. And oh my god, Hyunae loves me! She's so cute! Uh, okay, bye.